Brad. Where I don't know, I don't know how you got oh, got this cool weather and this nice breeze to come in. But Isn't it nice? I, however, you got that ordered. I hope you can keep keep getting that going. Oh that was yeah, perfect. yeah, this is great. I mean, finally back here to Cottonmouth, gonna do a little deer hunting. What is it, 60 today or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our first hunt last was at 94, 95. Oh, it was, it was miserable. It was miserable. Not like that today though. <laughs> I didn't you, ain't, you ain't unpacked from else. I, well, man. I did actually. I, ha I got all my, my, my open recalls and I forgot that I had this tied on my pocket. Yeah. I don't need that in a deer stand. Well, while you y'all were out there chasing them elk, I've been here working my tail off, you know, <laughs> checking the food it. plots and fishing well, stands and all that. Your, your boys say otherwise. Well, I don't care what your boys say. <laughs> Hello, I'm Wilbur Primos. All these hunts are exactly as they happen. There's no fancy edits, there's no stage scene. The calling you're going to hear is excited calling, but all these hunts are as they actually happen, and that's why we call it the truth about hunting. When the truth began in 1987, we had no idea where this journey would take us. 30 years later, we're still having fun. Welcome to Primo's Truth About Hunting. Primo's Truth About Hunting is brought to you by Bushnell, Savage, Federal, Matthews Archery, Drake, Mossy Oak, Polaris, and Primo's Hunting, Speak the Language. Well, I'm, I'm ready to get in the stand. We, you know, we just getting back from, from elk hunting and we just had a great time. And yeah. I'm ready to get in the tree stand now. Yeah, I am too. But I think I'm gonna hunt a ground blind that we, you know, the persimmon trees are really bearing fruit. A lot of persimmons. Well, the, the stand that Lake and I are going to, it had persimmons early, you yeah. know, and we hadn't checked it. See if they yeah, feed there's probably it, still some there. Yeah, so we're and, just gonna uh, go in there. It's, we've got takeout planted there too, so we got, I mean, we, we could yeah. have them come out either, so. Well, good I like deal. my chance. All right, well, let's uh, go get them. Okay, bro, well, good luck to you too. I'll see you back well, here. i tell dog. you what, any doe comes within range of me, she gonna be in trouble tonight. We had just got in the tree, bow, still on the ground. They pulled it up yet. Two big does came over there and fed around and went back, so. That's encouraging that they're moving early. It's the coolest day we've had since probably April. My favorite stand is the first year we started hunting Cottonmouth was right here on Close Road. And there's just lots and lots of persimmons, uh, persimmon trees down here in this bottom, especially this time of the year, early, early in the season. Had a little front come through last night, and uh, it's a very pleasant 60 degrees. I remember opening day last year, it was about 100 degrees, and the mosquitoes were everywhere. It's horrible. I'm gonna take her if she turns broadside, and she just turned broadside. Ready? Almost worth sitting out here at 90 degree temperature with no breeze and mosquitoes singing everywhere. Oh, whoa! Who's driving this thing, Jimmy? Water finally pulled back out of here a couple of months ago and everything's greened up. I'm excited. I think it ought to be a good afternoon. How about you, Jordan? Yeah. It's the wind, it's just now, which our best hour of the afternoon, but the wind's just now starting to get consistent. It's kind of been a little gusty. It's been, it hasn't been great. The wind's supposed to be blowing like this, but it's got a bit of west in it, northwest. And just saw another doe, 
and a phone where that first deer we saw earlier came out. You know how it is when you feel like you're maybe your stand location is about a hundred yards from where it needs to be. We could just pick this blind up and boogie on over there. Still was fun getting the tree and a guitar. First take it on the kink for package back on the night. We hadn't heard from Jimmy or Jordan yet, so we don't know what they did. And uh, we'll meet them back at the skinny shed here in a little bit. Hopefully they had some luck. And I'll be back after them all. Don't you just love early bow season? I do when the weather is like it was today. Yeah, it was, it, you know, it was nice. It, it was nice being in the woods. It's actually a little chilly coming in. Oh, yeah. Put a little light coat on, but um, yeah, we saw two deer right when we first got in the stand, uh, two big does. Yeah, we saw a couple of does and a fawn, and the uh, and good thing about it, they look real healthy, fat and healthy. The ones and, that, yeah, the ones we saw look good. Yeah, they were just feeding on browse, you know. Never come to persimmons or? No. Yeah. I mean, there's so many persimmon trees right it now. Was, it was at least it wasn't 92 degrees. I enjoyed sitting back and being back in a tree stand. I only swatted one mosquito. <laughs> I, got, I had one too. Right 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 dark. Let's go get some supper, right. Jimbo. We. First grilled dinner at Cottonmouth this year. Thing started right. Hell perfect. How do you feel about Jordan being responsible for your supper? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, but I think uh, next time uh, we'll let him do something else. Because we have hamburgers with no bun. And he, he is the one that picked the menu that we were going to have hamburgers. Can't make a man happy. No, you make me very happy. This segment of The Truth is brought to you by Black Gold and Ripcord. Well, it's still a pretty day. We got good, we got decent weather. It's warmed up a little bit, but it's still cool. It's not, it's not smoking hot though, is it? I think Lake and I went there this morning and we went in there and found those big striped oaks. And you know, this spot is different. Lake and I hunted this spot a lot for three years. And this is kind of where Rocker was living, and he moved a little bit last year. And um, then, you know, I had an encounter with him, and then Jimmy got him with a gun. You see him? Yeah, he's coming. See? Oh, yeah, yeah, he just stepped us out. He's moving behind that island now. I think you and I just killed Rocker. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I, Appreciate I, you. I, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't a better person in the world have, have oh, yeah. shot this deer. And this is as good as it gets right here. But we're back in here looking. You can see, I call these striped oaks. Not all. I always call them striped oaks down in the river bottom. But it's, our, it's our mid-October and we're just taking it easy. But I'm going to put this camera right here. There's about eight, not all, striped oak trees right here. And these two right here by our stand. Actually, the, the two that are dropping the best. So, as the wind holds north northeast, we should have a great wind to hunt this this afternoon. Well, let's get at them. It's just better. It's better than sitting at the house, ain't That's it? That's right. Good luck, Jimbo. I want them watched enough TV. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Jordan. Ready to go? Come on. Come on. Okay. So. Lake, Jordan, Brad, and Jimmy have all gone hunting. I just got finished shooting the opening piece, and uh, Will Primos, who's normally here with us, had foot surgery today and could not make uh, the first trip to Cottonmouth. So that kind of puts us out uh, one hunter, and it leaves a cameraman sitting idle, which is me. The thought was Troy could stay back shoot some b-roll and get some aerials and different things that we need to produce the tv show but little did they know that t-roy has filmed itself before my bow's in the truck my tripod i got my camera over there it's a no-brainer i'm going hunting our main focus for being here this week was to 
do a little hunting, but mainly, mainly scouting and hanging stands. So far, the wind is doing us a little bit better than it did yesterday. It's blowing out of the northeast, like you're saying. Well, it's our second afternoon of opening week. Archery season, we're all hunting up in Arkansas in the uh, persimmon patch. We had some pictures of some does in here yesterday. So, uh, hopefully we'll see something. This year's crops of corn, soybeans, and cotton here inside the Mississippi River levee system has all but been wiped out by late summer floods. But these same nutrient-rich floodwaters has also allowed an abundance of natural browse to spring up in late September. The late green up, abundance of cover, and tender browse is making it tough to find a concentrated food source. Paying attention to the wind, keeping human pressure to a minimum, and being patient is important during these early season struggles. Just got a really good nine point. I just walked out. It's a mainframe eight. Kicker on his two looks to be about five and a half years old, four and a half, five and a half. Really tall brown tines. He makes it up here, I'll take a shot at him. Look at that. That joke was waving me off with his tail. Bye, Troy. See you. I'm keeping that big fella a secret right there. So we're sitting there, and we're, I mean, we find, I mean, it's so pretty and green out there. It's just yeah. like, it looked like it ought to be turkey hunting instead of deer hunting. And uh, we finally see two big does out there, and they're feeding around, just eating vines, and yeah. with those pecan, all the top of those little pecan trees coming up. And all of a sudden, we've been watching them an hour. And all of a sudden, they both go to blowing and raising cane. Like I thought, I heard something. Down there. I, I think I thought about y'all. So I wonder if they could hear that. I thought I heard. So I asked Jordan. I said, "Did you hear that? What is that?" I mean, they were going nuts. Yeah. And running around, and they run off, and they run back, and kind of figured out there's something in there. Finally, here comes a bobcat. Comes out, and that one big doe followed that bobcat, bobcat. just almost it, right yeah. to us. Well, it was fun. It was fun seeing those bucks, and uh, man, they came out in that food plot that, uh, and they never stopped eating. In the food they plot. They would eat the food plot. Yeah, some of that brassicas is really on up there. And then they were eating late, like your deer. They were eating leaves and vines. You know, yes. but they're in good shape. They were all, all four of them we saw were fat. I mean, it'd be our first week's been kind of slow. I'd rather hunt like this and not shoot a deer than I did hunting 95 degrees. <laughs> all right, let's go to the house and get some uh, supper. Yeah, go get these boots cleaned off. An unusual September spring greenup caused by late August floodwaters has Brad and Jimmy struggling to even get a doe into bow range. But old T-Roy, he's done slipped off and found this old fella hanging out in the kill D plot. Now Jimbo got wind of what T-Roy saw, and he's bribed Troy with a little cash for his information. And you can only imagine where Jimmy's going to be hunting this afternoon. Where are you going? We're going uh, to the Louisiana. We're going to kill D. You know, uh, that's where you kill that big old deer with the Yeah, I killed, a, I killed a real nice buck. That same blind set up down there on that field. You know yeah. <sighs> I think he's pretty dead. You brought you brought the old hot camera with you, Lake. Uh huh. Lake, I know that's not Rocker, but I tell you what, buddy, he's pretty close. Well, I think I'm gonna go down to the edge of the big field and get out of these trees and see exactly what the wind's doing, and then we'll decide where, where we're gonna go from there. Yeah, better not no doe come within 40, 50 yards of me this afternoon. <laughs> you gonna let her rip? My freezer is kind of empty right now. I need to, I need to add to it. <laughs> All right, well, good deal. Well, good luck, All and right, we'll, we'll see you at dark. Right, good luck to you. You're gonna need it with Lake on the camera. <laughs> yeah, true, always. Got it here, we got a 
like we talked about. If you could see that down there, we got a north west wind like this. The Mississippi River is just 200 yards right there to the east of us. So, uh, I mean, it's a chance a deer could come from behind us. But Troy saw a good buck. It was a shooter eight point. But he was trying to video himself and it never really got right. So hopefully that, that buck will still be around. And uh, so I'm excited. I'm happy to be here. Very surprised that we only saw two deer. But we did have a young six point and a little spike come in, fed around and went on off just, just the way we thought they might. But that was it. We got about another, not quite an hour light left. I'd be very surprised if something don't happen soon. Big one. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> that may be why we didn't see any deer tonight. Good hunt. Yeah, great. Get some pellets in there, and then you turn the heat up. Well, on the menu tonight is going to be green beans, cabbage, and lamb chop. Because we, we had deer meat from last year, we didn't kill that many. And we ain't killed no deer this year, so we having to, having to go to the store. Ain't ideal, but that's what we gotta do. That's what vegetarians gotta do. <laughs> Sir Jimmy Primo will be the, be the, be the, be the honorary tester. Cause I know he'll tell it like it is. Delicious. Is it good, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he always will over here. He, he, he like that. Want to send him a picture? Yeah. What? For all models of the Generation 3 trigger stick, as seen on the truth, visit primos.com. This segment of The Truth is brought to you by Ozonix and Tight Spot Quivers. Well, all I know is I had a nap and I had a good lunch. And we're going to a spot we don't have a trail camera, but we have some good old school feeling and there's a lot of the good deer sound there. So yeah. it could be nighttime, could be daytime we don't know we're gonna go find out it's hard to get fired up this early in the season i remember when i was a kid man i couldn't october 1st i was out there out but there every day it didn't matter know. if it was 100 degrees or yeah. 60 degrees none of us have ever hunted deer this sounds weird but if you hear it out i think it'll make sense hunted deer the end of may or first of june and right now the river stayed up through july and early august in places and so the plants were suppressed from december say to august so now it's like springtime green up and these deer are not eating anything but browse and they're moving from here to my truck right there in a day. <laughs> they ain't, they ain't, they ain't walking. Fast. Deer movement has been slow for Brad and Jimmy this last week of October but Jordan, Brad, Lake and Troy have already made plans for the coming week starting November 3rd and it has a little something to do with some Kansas archery tags in Jordan and Brad's pocket that Jimmy knows nothing about. I have thought about this day for all summer, since my tag came in the mail. and It's been burning a hole in my pocket, so I'm very excited to go, and Mr. Jerry, we're going Mr. Jerry Page again, and we turkey hunted up there with him. First time going deer hunting up there, so I'm, I'm pumped.
Well, yeah, one thing about coming here, they know they're gonna eat good. Did he make you drive the whole way? The whole he, way. He didn't do anything but sit there and drove, gripe the he whole drove time. last 30 minutes. Brad's a little bit behind us. We got separated this morning and he got hung up in traffic, but he'll be along. Does that, Brad, mean, does that Brad, mean we got to wait supper on him? Uh, absolutely uh, not. <laughs> he wants to get hung up in traffic. We're going to eat. There you go. <laughs> it's going to so, be fun. I know those spots we came and hung earlier this summer. I'm, that's mm. all I've been thinking about on drive yeah. up here is getting in some of those. It's hot. We're in Kansas. Lake and I drove up yesterday. It is middle of August. We came up here yesterday because Brad and I both drew Kansas whitetail archery tags this year. Being that we 99.9% .9 hunt cottonmouth all the time. It's gonna be special this year. Like I said, we drove up last night and met Jerry and he went around and showed us these places today. That they're just unbelievable. It's just untouched territory. It doesn't ever get hunted. And Lake and I, this is our first setup we've hung, our new Millennium stands and getting them all set up and just getting the itching for, it's getting the itching for whitetail season for sure. We still got to go elk hunting, but we're going to be sitting right here first week of November, hoping to see some rutting bucks. What happens in Kansas stays in Kansas. Oh boy, when that happens like that, that is fun. I was so glad to see it. Man, I'm, I am pumped. I know you, you done changed the luck of the camp now. Rattled him up yesterday and grunted him up this morning. It's as cold as I've hunted in a long yeah, time. It was before. cold. <laughs> and you had a good morning. We saw a few deer, not many, but you, you, you and it's, Troy saw a lot. It's the best hunt we've had. And it's just a matter of time for when the big ones come. That's a giant. <laughs>